In this tutorial, we will show how to implement storage in grid-connected systems. More and more grid-connected PV systems are now equipped with a battery storage. The objective of such hybrid systems may be quite different from case to case. For this tutorial, we will have a look at the self-consumption strategy. The self-consumption strategy with storage have the objective of consuming its own PV produced energy during the day and draw a minimum of energy from the grid. Excess energy will be stored and will be consumed during the night. Excess energy from PV generators can also be injected into the grid. But in this strategy, the energy in the batteries will only be for self-consumption and will never be injected into the grid. In this tutorial, we will go through an example for the self-consumption option. Open the project Demo Residential System at Geneva. Variant VC4 that has already a load profile in its definition. You can see the load profile in self-consumption and by selecting the tab Graph. After coming back to the project window, we will now add a battery to the system. Click on Storage. First, you have to choose a storage strategy in the drop-down list. PVSYST provides three different storage strategies. But for this tutorial, we will only focus on self-consumption. This scenario requires the definition of a load profile that is defined in self-consumption. The battery energy will never be used to feed the grid. The battery charging will start as soon as there is an excess PV generation. Excess energy produced by the PV generators can be injected into the grid according to your choice. Let's start with the self-consumption strategy. The load profile must be defined beforehand. The variant that we are using for this example contains already a load profile, but you still have to activate it for the storage. Click on the button Self-Consumption. You can check the load profile in the Graph tab. Now click on OK. We can now go on and define the storage pack. We keep the generic option for manufacturers and in the drop-down list to the right, we select the first option, Battery Module Lithium Ion. The number of batteries in series and in parallel is set automatically according to the load profile defined previously in self-consumption. You can read all the information related to the selected battery below. PV PVSYST has chosen five batteries in parallel and defined as a number of module and number of elements. In our example, we have got number of modules 5 and number of elements 2320. This battery model contains 264 cells and we multiply by 5, resulting in this amount of elements. Values for battery pack voltage are rounded up to the next decimal. This is why it's 26 volts. The C10 rating is the capacity of the battery to discharge completely over a period of 10 hours. And this battery has a global capacity of 900 ampere hour. Stored energy at 80% depth of discharge is of 18.4 kilowatt hour. The energy stored for a depth of discharge of 80% corresponds to a safety rule for the battery. Indeed, a battery does not discharge completely, nor does it recharge to 100% for reasons of oxidation. These parameters are called state of charge, SOC, and can be modified from the tab self-consumption. For your information, we indicate the total weight of the battery system. Also, we indicate the number of cycle charging and discharging in the worst-case scenario of 50% DOD. And finally, you can read the total stored energy during battery lifetime. 
You can also define the battery operating temperature. The battery temperature is important for the aging of the battery. An increase of 10 degrees Celsius reduces the static battery life by a factor of 2. Also, you can find the main information of your system, such as installed PV array power, the best daily production according to a clear sky in summer, and the maximum users need power linked to the predefined load profile. Then, you can find information regarding your battery pack. In the best case scenario with full sun conditions, you can charge the battery's pack in two hours. And you have two information regarding discharging. For discharging under average load is 16 hours and under maximum load is 7 hours. For this tutorial, we leave these parameters at their default values. At this point, the message box on the top right is telling us to define the maximum charging power. Now, click on the tab Self-Consumption. By default, PVCIS set up the battery state of charge threshold for maximum charging and minimum charging. When the battery attained 95% of his capacity, we will stop charging and we will discharge. After 20% of his capacity, we will stop discharging. By applying these values, we avoid lifetime batteries degradation. In operating conditions, we can read an explanation on how batteries will be charged and discharged. Also, you have the option to inject solar energy to the grid. In battery input charger, PVSYST has defined by default the maximum charging power available. We can modify this power to reduce the time of full charge duration. The battery should not charge too fast. For lithium-ion batteries, a full charge in one hour is the minimum reasonable to not compromise the lifetime of the battery. This should be ensured by the maximum power of the charger. The possible excess power will be injected into the grid. In order to optimize the lifetime of the battery, please refer to the datasheet to know the adequate discharge time without damaging the battery. We will leave these parameters by default. PVSYST sets the maximum discharging power based on the load profile predefined in self-consumption. The battery has a full discharge duration of 7 hours. You also have the maximum user's power and the average user's power for your information. Be careful, you can reduce your discharging power and increase the discharge duration of the batteries. But in this case, when you need more power, your system will take it from the grid. We will also leave these parameters by default. Click OK and run the simulation. After the simulation has finished, click on Lostogram to visualize the results and energy flux. The energy flux is split into two parts. The direct use of energy from solar energy and the energy that is temporarily stored in the battery. The output of the diagram is divided in three. On the right side, there is the excess generation injected to the grid. Left of it, there is the solar energy used for self-consumption, which includes the part that was stored in the battery. On the left, you can see the energy from the grid to the user. This part means that the system is not entirely autonomous and still requires some energy from the grid to cover the user needs defined by the load profile. In this tutorial, we have seen how to set up a storage with the self-consumption strategy.